Okay, and welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting hour as we try to make every hour for you. The Franklin Scandal. Some of you know about this, some of you don't, so pay attention because this is a very big story. My guest this hour is author Nick Bryant. Uh, Nick's writing has uh, recurrently focused on the plight of disadvantaged children in the United States, and he's been published in numerous national journals, including the Journal of Professional Ethics, the Journal of Applied Developmental Psychology, the Journal of Social Distress and Homelessness, the Journal of Healthcare for the Poor and Underdeserved, and the Journal of Social Health as well. A whole bunch of journals there. The point is he's uh, very well published and very well respected. He's also published a book called America's Children, Triumph of Tragedy, Addressing the Medical and Developmental Problems of Lower Socioeconomic Children in America. His mainstream and investigative journalism has appeared in the Twin Cities Reader, Salon.com, Gear, and Playboy. He lives in New York City and is with us up late tonight. Uh, thanks for staying up late, Nick. No problem, Jeff. Uh, the Franklin Scandal. This I remember first hearing about this, and it, boy, it had to be, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago when r rumors were running about this thing. Um, tell our listeners about just the basics of it and, and how you got involved. I can see how you got involved with it, but, uh, but this issue of a, a cover-up of this magnitude is, is almost beyond belief. It is incomprehensible, and uh, I was very skeptical of uh, the Franklin story when I first started to look into it. I was, too. I Excuse me, but I was. I remember now that I read this. I said, no, come on, this is too much. It uh, It is over the top, and uh, I can understand why most people, most people in the mainstream just uh, – would look at it and, and actually find it somewhat comedic because uh, it, it is so over the top. And it is about a national pedophile network that flew children from coast to coast and pandered them to the rich and powerful. And, and we're network. talking about folks, excuse me, the, the rich and powerful names you would recognize, okay, uh, in many cases. Eminent politicians, affluent yeah. businessmen, and... The favored, I've acquired about 200 of the Rings flight receipts and a favored destination of the Rings pimps. And the kids was Washington, D.C. And they would bring the kids to this house in Washington, D.C. that was wired for audio and visual. And a lot of power brokers would be uh, invited to the house and there would be a party, a, generally like a straight political type party. Right. And then some things would happen. Someone would break out a line of coke or mm -hmm. there would be some kind of uh, gratuitous sexual activity and the squares would split and the serious customers would stick around and whatever they wanted they were given if they wanted little boys they were given little boys if they wanted little girls they were given little girls if they wanted young men in their 20s they were given young men in their 20s whatever their heart desired they were coke whatever and uh, and their pictures were taken and you're talking about, of course, instant blackmail for, for life, uh, control of these politicians and, and uh, corporate types. Uh, this is the, a very old way of doing it, but this was done at, at very high levels of technical expertise uh, with audio video, as you've mentioned, uh, certainly uh, private jets. Uh, you, I guess they flew some of them on public uh, the transit as well, but the bottom line was this was conducted at a level that most Americans would just say, sorry, too much, doesn't work. But it, it happened. And, it's and mind-boggling, and uh, when you look at the power that went into covering it up, you had the Department of Justice at the highest levels, and you also had the Secret Service and the FBI uh, basically uh, subject people to a full court press. And yeah. uh, it yeah. was imperative that this be covered up and that it never be brought into uh brought into the light, and uh, the media, the mainstream media, either through huh. omission or commission, uh, mm -hmm. certainly colluded in the cover-up. Or collusion, and as you say, this, uh, this story is so ugly, and, and people died. Uh, this, there this... are a lot of mysterious deaths connected to this pedophile network and its subsequent cover-up. Um, it's difficult to know how many. It's... There's a lot of suicides, 
and uh, sometimes it's difficult to know if people killed themselves because right. they felt an, an abnormal amount of heat or uh, or their lifestyle, or they killed themselves because uh, someone basically suicided them. It's, yeah. it's difficult to know in right. Franklin. Right, sure. But there's a lot of bodies strewn all over this story. There, there certainly are. Uh, so... In beginning to research this book, you had to know you were putting yourself at risk to a degree. There, there, there just are very few people who would want to wade into this. And I have to be honest, and I always am. Uh, when this first came out and I looked at it, it was, it was too much for me. I didn't want to get involved with it. Not, not out of fear. I don't have any fear. But I didn't want to be in a position where it was so lurid and so ridiculously bizarre that people would think I'd been taken for a ride, and I wanted to find out if I could ascertain for myself that this was 100% true, and it is. And your book, The Franklin Scandal, a story of power brokers, child abuse, and betrayal, uh, is, again, must-reading for anyone who cares about this country and, and what goes on. And because the Franklin issue is now in the past, does not mean the same thing isn't going on now. And probably is, and maybe even more so than it was then. I, I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Well, I've uh, uh, Franklin. I've put nearly seven years of my life into researching Franklin. Seven. Wow. But, but as I've researched Franklin, I've seen other power broker pedophile networks mm -hmm. that have nearly been brought to uh, light, and the window has immediately been shut on them. Right. And uh, so I would have to s assume that. Uh, the powers that be that uh, are running these pedophile networks, they've never been stopped. Well, supply and demand, right? The demand, the demand is there. Uh, it's, it, it's unfortunate, but it's, it's the withering moral stature of this failing species of ours because the, the demand is there for perversion of unimaginable magnitude. And we're talking about perversion that uh, involves the death of, of young children. Uh, deaths, many deaths. Apparently, over time, we, we kids just disappear. Look at the Johnny Gosh story. Um, how many children disappear every year in this country? Isn't it fifty or sixty thousand? And you know, a lot of them are runaways. A lot of them are taken by disaffected spouses, divorces, but uh, a lot of them aren't. So, well, it's you... very strange. I mean, law enforcement can tell you how many cars were stolen in any given year, but they can't tell you how many children are missing. I, I find that to be kind of uh, well, perplexing. Yeah. It, it is. It is. All right. Uh, have you gotten any death threats over this uh, research? Well, when you talk about it, I the first time I went to Omaha, and I've been to Omaha 14 times over the last seven years. The first uh -huh. time I went to Omaha, I kind of went there as a tourist, believe it or not. I, uh -huh. uh, I was looking into Franklin, but I didn't really think I was going to find much. Uh -huh. And I just I did not think that it could be as big and ugly as it turned out to be, I, I just, uh, I knew that something had gone down, but I was pretty convinced that it was small, and, uh, um, and then when I got to Omaha, uh, I took some heat, and on my last night there, I had a death threat. And at that point, the light bulb went on, and, uh, I no longer became a tourist. I said, there is something here. If someone is, uh, going to threaten my life, then they're obviously protecting something. Is there any link, and I just want to toss this out early, between the location of the Strategic Air Command headquarters at Offutt AFB near Omaha and uh, and this venue that we're talking about? Did you ever come across anything that tied those two together? Um, or, or a better question perhaps is why Omaha? Omaha, well, you do have Offutt Air Force Base at Omaha, and uh, it doesn't have an international airport. And the media is pretty heavily uh, monopolistic. You've got the Omaha World Herald, which is the primary news source for most people in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And it has a, a slant that uh, is very, very uh, uh, draconian. And uh, so <laughs> there are... <laughs> variables that I think make Omaha more conducive to this type of thing. And then there's also Boys Town, 